Hey guys, Jenna here. Welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes. Today's tour takes us to a tiny house community in Texas where one family is focusing on keeping their footprint small. This teeny tiny home features three bedrooms, a catio, and enough space for this family of four to live comfortably. If you like these kind of videos, please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every time I publish a new tour. But right now, let's jump right in and meet this family who's proving not everything is bigger in Texas. started looking into tiny houses I was just really interested in the idea of being mobile but also having the family be closer knit having a smaller space to leave behind so we can spend more time outdoors less to manage and deal with inside the house it took a couple years of convincing Rick and then he got on board and decided he wanted to build it himself it was all him it was all him it was all him he did everything We rented a house in East Dallas. It looked like a shed. <laughs> it was pretty bad. And uh, we rented the house with the sole purpose of building this house in the backyard. But we lived there, built the house over the course of two years. It cost about 45000 to 50000 Here at the Lake Dallas Tiny House Village, there's a park right across the street. The library is right there by the park. So there are lots of things within walking distance or right here on the property. There's also a fire pit and community garden space as well. We pay 600 a month for the lot rent. I think we all really love living in a tiny house community. For the kiddos, they have a lot of free space to run around. It is really like a village, getting to know our neighbors and feeling like you're secure. If you need sugar, somebody has got it. It's very much that community feel that I think most tiny housers are looking for. We built the house starting in 2017. It took about two years to build. Wife and I built it ourselves. It's a 36 foot gooseneck. We went with a gooseneck specifically because it's just easier to transport, especially at the length that it's at. We went with wood and metal siding. Just wanted a bit of contrast, just to be a bit more flashy than a just traditional wood siding. We did uh, painted siding on one side, shiplap siding on the other, and we had burnt this to do sort of like a Shisugi Bond kind of finish, but uh, as it turns out, I didn't seal it well enough, and a lot of the sashugi bond, a lot of the burning, the ash kind of came off over time. In terms of utilities, we're on a 50 amp hookup. We've got a tankless water heater. It's the only gas that we use for the house. We've got a catio for the cat. The cat's actually in the catio right now. That's just to give them some space of their own, just to be outside. After we got here, we decided that we wanted to put in a patio, something where we could sit outside, have our coffee in the morning. It also gives us plenty of space on the underside to uh, store a lot of stuff that we don't want to keep inside. So seasonal decorations, crafts for the kids. After some time, we also went ahead and put in a roof uh, just uh, so I could enjoy our coffee in the rain. In the back, we extended the deck recently just to have something for you know, the outdoor storage and the grill, just to have this stuff elevated, keep it off the dirt. The deck actually, all the wood for this was from a previous tenant's deck. They moved, took their deck apart. So we took all the materials and reassembled it and literally had a scrap of like this much two by six left. It worked out pretty perfectly. Now let's take a look at the inside of the house. It's 
starting here in the kitchen. One of the things that was really important to me was that we have a kitchen that could fit four people. If we're all helping each other cook or getting snacks or whatever the case might be. I also like to cook a lot, so I wanted to have plenty of counter space if I wanted to roll something out or set up a buffet or something like that. We cook very easily with our large toaster oven and our induction burner. I don't feel limited at all in what we can do. You can see we have plenty of space for spices and all the <laughs> utensils and dishware and cookware we could possibly need. We have a pantry even. This was all Ikea custom for us, so we have space for snacks and pet food and things like that down here. We didn't want to have a super tiny fridge, so this is an apartment size fridge. It's not full size, but it still fits everything that we need. Um, you can see there's still plenty of space for extra groceries and we have everything that we need in there. We don't have a traditional living room space. We have had a couch in here in the past, but it was kind of cumbersome with the couch and then we'd pop up our table and it just didn't leave a lot of walking space. We're home a lot, especially with quarantine and we homeschool. So the table just makes a lot more sense for our family. This table is nice because it can pop down. This side can go down and it's just really narrow and it opens up the space for us. Or we can also extend both sides, turn it sideways and then have multiple people sitting at it. We could add six people around the table. If we're watching TV, here we have the pull down screen and we can just have our dinner movie night all together at one time. We also have these custom shelves that my husband built. These were an add-on when we realized that the standalone shelf that we had wasn't enough space for us. Again, we homeschool, so we have lots of items that we like to keep on hand and easily accessible for the kiddos. Now through to the bathroom. We have a curtain, which is surprisingly very private, but this was a non-standard size, so we had to go with this option versus getting a custom-built door. Another thing that was big for us was to have a tub. So we ended up going with this round wash bin. It's about three feet wide and we can comfortably take baths if we want or showers. We weren't gonna have space for a full size tub, but we didn't want to miss out on this feature. So this is the catio from the inside. Our cats really enjoy having access to the outdoor space. And it's really nice for us too, because this guy is an escape artist. And so if we keep the door open for too long, he'll shoot out. So on days when we need to keep it open, we can give him some outside time and you know, not worry about him running off. <laughs> Get some rubs. We were able to get this in here because we were able to cut in under the stairs that we have leading up to the gooseneck. So this fits in nicely and we were also able to get in our litter robot, which is nice when you have two cats in a tiny house space. So now we're gonna go upstairs into the gooseneck. First, we have our daughter's room. Because the space is narrow, we wanted to make sure she could easily get in and out, but maybe in a fun and creative way that saves space. So we use the rock climbing holds so that she can climb in and out. She's eight and toys are a priority. So right now she's got stacks of bins, but plenty of play space on the floor and all the decorations that she could want. She's definitely made it hers. It was important for us to have the kids feel like the space was theirs since this was kind of a journey that we were taking them on. And so I did some custom murals for both of their ceilings. So you'll see hers is a rainbow and she has a decoupage floor with roses and then she kind of has free reign on decorating it otherwise so that she really feels comfortable in this space. Now onto the master. This is our space. It was a decision that we made to have standing room bedroom because my husband is 6'3 and it's nice for him to be able to stand up in his own bedroom. So we have our custom bed here that we elevated on top of Ikea cabinets. It gives, a, gives us a lot of storage space underneath the bed. Um, as well as plenty of room for all of our clothes in these drawers here. So we've got one more bedroom on the opposite side of the house. It is a three bedroom tiny house, which I think is pretty unique. We, again, really wanted our kiddos to have their own space and to feel comfortable in their house. So here we have our son's room. Again, lots of free reign. You can see he has fun lights and plenty of storage space 
make it his own. His mural ceiling is the solar system. So another thing we have here is we wanted to have a safe wall for them without blocking the air circulation. So Rick came up with a way to weave these ropes back and forth and create a net wall that's secure, but allows a lot of airflow and keeps the space feeling open. I don't think we know exactly what our plans are for the future. It's kind of fun just taking it day by day. It took two years to build the tiny house, so there was a lot of planning and looking forward to the time when we'd be living in it. And so now that we are, we're just kind of in the moment. For now, traveling would be fun. Staying here, having this be our home base and getting out more is really more of the immediate goal. I wanna go to Hawaii. <laughs> I wanna go with you. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.